Now, this, this allowed us to pull our resources together to, to create a systematic backend so we could steward the resources that we received to make it go further and reach more people. Now, in this room here, do you know that as a church, uh, you've been partnering with Goodwill for over 29 years? That's a long time. That's a lot of history, that's a lot of lives changed, a lot of meals fed, uh, and a lot of clothes put on people that really need it. But give me a wave if you've actually been to Goodwill. A few people? Alright, so for those of you that haven't, we're going to go on a little virtual tour today. This is a photo that you have on your missions board and, you know, this is, Goodwill is one of our oldest uh, rescue missions here in New Jersey, started in 1896. And it is our mission to ensure that those experiencing food insecurity and homelessness have access to basic needs, emergency critical care that we can meet them where they're at and value them as individuals. Why? Because holistically together, we're all created in the image of God. We love because we have first been loved. This is our mandate as believers, as fellow Christians, to love and provide dignity and empower our fellow humans because we are all created in the image of God. So this is our front desk where everybody coming in is greeted with a friendly face and no matter where they're at, what stage of life, of journey they're at, if they want to come into our doors, they are welcomed with open arms. You know, 365 days a year, anybody who walks through, no questions asked. We want to be the face of love, grace, kindness, and mercy when they're experiencing the worst day of their lives and when they have been experiencing the worst day of their lives for sometimes multiple years. What can we do to build trust that they can actually come to us and we can help them on their journey to then rejoin society free from addiction, free from abuse, free from any mental health issues that have plagued them over the years that they can now contribute and live productive lives and find community of hope around them. We have a chapel service. You know, I had the privilege of having uh, our chaplain, Martin, with us. Uh, and feel free to ask him any questions, but every day at 5 p.m., we run a chapel service at Goodwill. Why? Because we know that we can meet immediate needs, we can meet basic needs, but if we do not share with them why we do what we do, if we do not share with them the love of Christ, we're doing a disservice to them. So, 45 minutes every day, 5 p.m., people come in, they can hear the Word of God, worship together, and get a glimpse of heaven while their life is going through all sorts of chaos and mess. Every day, we serve over 250 meals to the community. It's just incredible. The small bit that you do as a church to partner with us allows us to do so much more as well. Meal service. It's a place where people find hope. They don't need to worry about where the next meal comes from. They can come to us and be realized and realize that they, they are valued. They are individuals who have their own hopes and dreams and that there is a future and then they can begin to hope for that future again. You know, prior to working at the Bowery, which is now Goodwill, we've all joined together. I used to work for an aid and development organization called Compassion. So we dealt with uh, children born into poverty and the worst of the worst through no fault of their own through just being born. And I watched a documentary about eight years ago which helped my transition from the corporate world into the NGO space. And they were interviewing a young boy in India. Wouldn't be more than 11 years old. And he's breaking rocks because his father was breaking rocks. His father was breaking rocks because his wife fell sick and he needed a small loan to buy some medicine. And so, they were interviewing this young boy, breaking rocks. And they asked him a question at the end of the day, going, what do you hope for? What do you dream for when you go to bed at night? And the answer has never left me. It hasn't haunted me, but it has spurred me in a desire to stand up for an injustice. And he replied tearfully, 
looking back at the camera going, I pray that God takes away my dreams because I, may, I know they will never come to reality. Like the, the people that we minister to on a daily basis face that same realization. Stuck in a cycle of chronic homelessness where they sometimes pray that they do not dream because they do not see a way out of their current situation. But a simple meal, a hot meal, a bed to rest their head, having access to a hot shower, that allows them to dare to hope to dream again. And it's the first response that is the most important response. So we have an overnight shelter where 34 men, 18 women can come and sleep, rest their head, have access to showers, and have a place just to rest. We have a clothing room where we can provide clothes to those that need it, donated by churches, individuals, everybody from the community rallying in to say, hey, this is our city. If we want to make a difference, we need to do something about it. Why do we exist? It's because Sometimes homelessness is invisible, but the scope of homelessness is so broad. Almost 25,000 people in New Jersey are homeless. Look at those stats, 6,000 of them alone live in Essex County, which is where we are situated. Together, the Barry Mission, New York City Rescue Mission, <clears throat> Goodwill, it's combined. We see the homelessness stats in New York as well. It's astronomical. Coming from Australia, one thing that I saw and noticed straight off the bat is we cannot ignore what's going on. But year after year of seeing it, it is easy to turn away when we see the issue. And we ask you not to turn away, but to look at them and see them as children created in the image of God. And figure out how can we extend love and helping hand towards them. To empower them to make choices to rise above this situation and this circumstance. And we cannot do that if not for the love and the transformation of Christ that we have experienced in our own lives first. It is just a product of having first received his love then passing on his love. You know, one big thing that is important to understand is people don't choose to live on the streets. But it's easy in our situation sometimes to look at these people, individuals, and say we are the product of our decisions and therefore they are the product of their decisions. But the reality is very different. There are so many factors that we may never had to experience that they have experienced and that have driven them to that state. Give me a wave if you were born in New Jersey. Okay, there's a few here. So give me a wave if you were born outside of New Jersey. Yeah? Now give me a wave if you had a choice where you were born. <laughs> Look around. Look around. We don't choose. I've lived my whole life almost in Australia, but I was born in Malaysia. I'm the middle child. I have an elder sister and a younger brother who are born in Australia. I had no choice where I was born. We have no choice where we're born, what family we're born into, what time or place in history we're born into. Actually, if you look and think, we don't have a lot of choice in a lot of things. But what we can choose to do is, what will we do with what God has blessed us with? Actually, what will we do with what God has really entrusted to us? Why do we have what we have? Why are we born into the place that we are born? Why, do we, why are we able to worship where we are worshipping? It's because God wants us to steward that resource well. What is it? Our time, our network, our, our career, our friends, our family, our resource, our money. One day, we will stand before God and He will ask us to give an account of what did we do with what He entrusted to us. And I believe He has entrusted it to us because He knows that we will steward it well. Mayor Bill de Blasio said, Each individual found his or her way to the street via different paths, often filled with broken promises and exposure to dangerous situations which makes gaining their trust more difficult. We're not here to judge, just as Christ did not judge us when we approached Him. We're here to offer open hands and open hearts and welcome them to a place where they can choose. 
And so the Barry Mission, Goodwill's response, is to minister to men, women and children caught in the cycles of poverty, hopelessness and dependencies of many kinds and see their lives transformed by hope and joy, lasting productivity, eternal life through the power of Jesus Christ. We need the power of Jesus Christ to work in and through us and in and through them. You know, it's a realization that I learned a long time ago, but as much as our heart breaks for the situation, God's heart breaks more. This is God's ministry that we are partnering with together. And our goal is to be the most effective provider of compassionate care and a life transformation for hurting people in our city. We love because he first loved us. I love this photo because there is joy. There is that opportunity to dare to hope, to smile amidst the adversity that they face. And so as a mission, collectively, every year we serve over 650,000 hot meals. You know, we get 44,000 bags of groceries. We provide over 167,000 nights of shelter. We've given over 46,000 articles of clothing, made access for people to have over 13,000 hot showers, and provided over 1,300 medical appointments. We cannot do it alone. It's a partnership with churches, individuals like you, that allows us to do what we can do. Why don't you watch this story of this young woman? I grew up in an abusive household. My father is a junkie. He used to beat my mom. We would be sitting at the dinner table and all of a sudden he would like punch her in the face. I've been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder from um, severe trauma. I did like to go home. I stayed out as long as I could. I fell into like the wrong group of people. As a teenager, I was dating adult men. I was involved in a violent relationship with my boyfriend. I felt like my life was in danger because I grew up seeing it and that's the irony. I always said, oh, that's not going to be me, I'm not going to be like my mom, but I ended up just like her. It just got to the point where I was afraid to go to sleep. I couldn't sleep anymore because I was afraid he was going to cut my throat or something in the middle of the night. I packed my stuff and I left. I came to Bower Mission for help. I arrived and I was like, wow, you know, <laughs> it's like a mansion. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to stay here because it's too nice. It was hard to adjust just to how nice everybody was and how well I got treated. The beds were like pillows, like giant pillows, and I felt like a princess. It was wonderful. The first part of the program at the Bowery Mission is Gateway. And through Gateway, you decide if you want to go on to life transformation. And while you're in Gateway, you go to places like a 227 Bowery Mission and you volunteer to feed the homeless. The best thing about Gateway for me was that I didn't have time to think about my problems. And the work took me out of my head and there's something about serving other people that changes you when you see like your impact on the community. Some of the classes that we have are life skills, discipleship classes too. They're Bible centered. It gave me opportunity to think about my life and to know that I was loved by God. The Career Center is really helpful because there's a computer lab and you get to remake your resume. You meet other women in business who mentor you. Dinner at the kitchen in Harlem, it's like family dinner. When I was growing up, we didn't eat together. I was really introverted and I didn't really socialize. But there's a fellowship where you're talking about like all kinds of things, like your, the day you had. Mm, I'm curious because this is so good. Make the commercial. This is so good. <laughs> it's a simple thing, but it's very healing. I have worked as a baker, and um, I also have a dream of being a fashion designer. And so the plan is to get a job as a baker, and then do an internship for a designer, and work under a designer until I get hired. I feel like I can go out to the world now and be like an asset to the world instead of being a victim of the world. My name is Shanti and my life was transformed at the Bowery Mission and Women's Center. I love it, it's cool, right? You see joy back in their lives. 
And it's important to realize their situation doesn't define them, just as our situation doesn't define us. But their identity is in Christ. And when they find that, that is so hopeful. It's incredible to see how it all starts with just a hot meal. Edmund Burke, an Irish philosopher, said this, All that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good people, good people like us, to sit, just do nothing. So I want to leave you with this encouragement as well. Well, what can you do to help? We partner together as a church, and there's so many ways. Pray for us. Let neighbors know in our neighborhood as well that they can come to us for any help and support. Yeah. Bring, bring an extra piece of food with you when you meet someone so you have something to give them. It requires a bit of intentionality on our part, but it's not a big sacrifice. You can volunteer your time, host a food, a clothing drive, and you know, join the movement. We're, we're, we're starting something called Donate Your Dinner. You know, we go out for meals all the time, once a month. Is it something that you could do and say, hey, as a family, as an individual, I'm not gonna go out, but I'm gonna put that money instead to help some people who need it a little bit more than I do. Just to live a little bit more simply so we can give other people the chance to just simply live. Yeah. So, thank you for your time and love being here. And thank you for all the partnership over the years. God bless. Let's stay up here. Are there any questions for Carl? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Any questions? I'm, I'm just curious when the Bowery Mission joined with Goodwill. Uh, that was two years ago? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, okay. Two years ago. Together, you know, it's been a long process going forward. Actually, um, it, was, it was the Bowery, New York City Rescue Mission, and Goodwill. Yeah. The three of them came together about That's two right. years ago. Thank you. All right, well, thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Love being here.